Welcome to Pinnacle Academy's production of Our Town. Thank you all. Please, if we could put our cell phones on silent or vibrate or turn them off completely, that would be wonderful. We don't want the actors to be interrupted by any extra noises. I would also like to read to you a little letter I wrote, which maybe some of you already read on the back of the program, but I'd like to read it to you now. Dear audience, nothing great ever happens without the collaboration of dedicated people working together to bring to light a joint vision. At the beginning of our school year, the inspired vision at Pinnacle Academy was to give students an exciting opportunity for artistic expression. A chance to be a part of what theater types endearingly refer to as the stage. Finally, here we are. What you are about to see tonight goes beyond the mere one and a half hours you will spend as our dear audience members. Yes, the students on this stage have worked since November at crafting their own best version of a play many American audience know and love. But you are about to witness even more than that. You are about to experience a precious end result. Students who accepted a mighty challenge and now celebrate newly discovered strengths and admirable poise and courage. I would like to take a moment to also thank the many Pinnacle Academy VIPs who helped to put Our Town, a musical, on stage tonight. Thank you to the families who have shuttled our actors and crew members to and from endless rehearsals. Thank you to the Pinnacle Academy administration for giving endless support to make our production possible. Thank you to the Pinnacle Academy PTO for generously providing a budget for our production. And thank you to the Pinnacle Academy teachers and administrators who are volunteering their personal time tonight to help our show run smoothly. And thank you to the ultimate heroes of this production, the students. Students, without your bravery, there would not be a production tonight. I am awed by your talents, and I thank you for sharing them with our Pinnacle Academy community. Now, as they say in theater, on with the show. called Our Town. The day is May 4th, 1901, just before dawn. The sun is beginning to show some streaks of light over a mountain, and I suppose I should show you how our town lies. Right here is Main Street, and there's the post office and the county hall, jails in the basement. Right here is Mr. Morgan's drugstore and the grocery store. Everyone manages to look into those two stores once daily. The school's out past the mountain, and the high school's still out for the yard. Just as 
Zeni Garden, there are corn, <coughs> peas, hollyhock, heliotrope, and a lot of burdock. And over here, there's Mrs. Gibbs's garden, and it's just the same. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Webb's garden. It's just the same, only it's got sunflowers too. It's a nice town, you know what I mean? But nobody important has ever come out of it, as far as we know. The oldest tombstones in our, court, in our courtyard on the mountain say 1670 to 1680. There, there are Gibbses and Cartwrights and Herseys. The same names are used now, too. Now, as I said, it's about dawn, so another day has begun. Here comes Dr. Gibbs down Main Street now, and here comes Joanna Cartwright with the Morning Sentinel. Morning, Joetta. Has somebody been <coughs> sick, Doc? No, just some twins born on the other side of town. You want your paper now? Yep, I'll take it. Anything serious going on in the world since Wednesday? Yes, sir. My school teacher, Miss Foster, is getting married to a fellow over Concord. I declare. How do you kids feel about that? Well, of course it's none of my business, but I think a poor person ought to be a teacher, she ought to stay on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about that Joetta girl. Joetta was awful bright. She graduated top of her class here at our high school. She went out to Massachusetts Tech and graduated top of her class there too. Joetta was going to be a great engineer, but she died in the war nursing soldiers in France. All that education for nothing. George, Rebecca! Everything all right, Frank? Yes. I'm easy as kittens. Sit down and drink your coffee. You can catch a couple of hours of sleep this morning, can't you? Miss Wentworth, Miss Wentworth is coming at 11, and I guess I know what it's about, but that ain't what it used to be. All told, you won't get more than three hours of sleep. Frank Gibbs, I don't know what's become of you. I wish we could go away someplace and you could get some rest. I think it would do you some good. Emily, Wally, you'll be late for school. I declare, you've got to speak to George. It seems like something's come over him lately. I can't even get him to chop me some wood. He's no use to me at all. Is he sassy to you? No, all he does is whines and all he thinks about is that baseball. George, Rebecca, you'll be late for school. George, do as your mother tells you. Yes, Pa. Emily, you'll be late for school. Wally, come wash yourself good or I'll come up and do it myself. Mom, what dress should I wear? Now, Rebecca, don't make a noise. Your father's been out all night and needs his rest. I've washed and ironed that blue gingham for you special. Mama, I hate that dress. Now, Rebecca, you always look very nice. Every day I go to school, just like a sick turkey. Hush up with you. <laughs> Mama, George is throwing soap at me. I'll come up there, that's what I'll do. Children, now I won't have it. Breakfast is as good as any other meal. I won't have you gobbling like wolves. Wally, put down that piece. Aw, Ma! By 10 o'clock, I gotta know all about Canada. I'd much rather have my kids healthy and bright. I'm both, Mama. You know I am. I'm the brightest girl in school for my age. I have a wonderful memory. Eat your breakfast. <laughs> I'm bright too when I'm looking at my stamp brush. It seems to me that 25 cents for a boy your age is enough. But I declare, I don't know how you'll spend it all. Oh, Ma! I got a lot of things to buy. Strawberry milkshakes? Is that what you spend it on? But well, I don't see how Rebecca comes to have so much money. She has over a dollar. I'm a tipping up gradual. Now, Rebecca, I think it's a good idea to spend some every now and then. Mama, do you know what I love most in the world? Do you? Money. Eat <laughs> <laughs> your breakfast. Get the bell, Mama. I gotta go. Walk fast, but you don't have to run. Wally, pull up your pants. <laughs> Would you tell Miss Foster I send her my best congratulations? Yes, Mom. Now, Rebecca, you always look very nice. Pick up your feet. Good morning, Myrtle. How's your cold? Well, I still get that tickling feeling. I don't know how I'll be good at choreography tonight. Have you tried singing over your voice? Yes, but somehow I can't sing and stay on key. Now, Myrtle, I've got to tell you something, because if I don't, I'll burst. Why are Julia Gibbs? Myrtle, did one of those second-hand furniture men from Boston come to see you last Friday? No. Well, he called on me. 
At first I thought he was a patient waiting to see Doc Gibbs, but then he warmed his way into my parlor and Myrtle wept. He offered me $350 for Grandmother Hemsworth's high boy as I'm sitting here. Why did you leave me? He did, that old thing. I almost gave it to Cousin Hester Wilcox. Well, you're gonna take it, aren't you? I don't know. You don't know? $350. What's come over you? Well, if I could get the doc to take the money, I'd sell it like that. You know, Myrtle, it's been the dream of my life to see Paris friends, I suppose. But if we ever had the chance. Mm. What does Doc think about it? Well, I did beat the bush a little and said, if I got a legacy, that's the way I'd put it. I'd make him take me somewhere. Mm. What did he say? He said, no, it might make him disconnected with Grover's Corner to go traipsing around Europe. Better let well enough alone, he says. Well, if that second-hand furniture man's really willing to buy it, then you're going to sell it. Just keep dropping hints time to time. That's how I got to see that land to go, you know? Oh, I'm sorry I mentioned it. It only seems to me that once in your life, you ought to see a place where people don't speak in English, and they don't even want to. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to skip some time. It's early afternoon now. All the meals have been eaten, and all the dishes have been washed. There's an early afternoon calm in our town, with a buzzing and humming from the school year. The horses are dozing off their hitching posts, and there are a few buggies on Main Street. Dr. Gibbs is in his office, tapping people's knees and making them say, ah. Mr. Webb is outside mowing his lawn. And it's later than I thought. Here come the children now from school. I can't lose. I gotta go home now, Mom. I promise. I'm only Clark Street. What do you think you are today? Papa, you're terrible. One minute you call me names, and the next minute you tell me to stand up straight. I just don't listen to you. Hi, Emily. You made a fine speech in class today. Well, I was really ready to make a speech on the Monroe Doctrine. But at the last second, Miss Corcoran made me do one on the Louisiana Purchase instead. I worked an awful long time on both of them. Gee, it's funny, Emily. From my window up there, I can see you do your homework. And you do stick to it, Emily. You must really enjoy school. I just feel like it's something you have to go through. Yeah, I don't mind it, really. It passes some time. Yeah, well, what do you think? Maybe we can work out some type of telegraph window to window. And maybe, if I need help on those algebra problems, you could give me a few hints. Not the answers, Emily. Of course not. Just a few hints. Well, I think hints are allowed, George. So if you ever get stuck, whistle over to me, and I'll give you some hints. Gee, I guess you're just naturally bright, Emily. I think it's just the way a person's born. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, I want to be a farmer on my Uncle Luke's farm. And maybe, if I'm any good at it, I can gra just gradually have it. You mean the house and everything? Yeah, well, I've got to go out to the back baseball field. Bye, Emily. Bye, Bye George. George. Just swag. Well, George gave let himself a real conversation, didn't he? Why, uh, he's getting old. How old will he be now? I don't know. Mm, 15, 16, maybe. Mama, I'm in a speech in class today, and it was very good. What was it about? The Louisiana Purchase. It was like silk off a spool. <laughs> I'm going to make speeches all my life. Mama, can I ask you a question, and will you answer me serious? Seriously, dear, not serious. I guess what I wanted to ask was...
Yes, George, that's the easiest of them all. I just don't see it, Emily. Can you give me a hint? I'll tell you one thing. The answer's in yards. In yards? Yes, George, write it down in the paper. Write in the question that says in square yards. In square yards. In square yards of wallpaper. Of wallpaper. OK, thank you, Emily. <laughs> You're welcome, George. <laughs> I can't work at all. I mean, that sounds terrible. And with fire pockets going on, I think if you hold it, you can hear the train all the way to country. Hear anyway. it? Mm, what do you know? Well, I guess I better get back and try to work. Okay, thank you, Emily. Good night. Good night, George. Oh, George, can you come down a minute? Yes, Pa. Make yourself comfortable, George. I won't be keeping you a minute. George, how old are you? Uh, I, I'm 16, almost 17, Pa. And what do you want to do when school's over? I want to be a farmer on Uncle Luke's farm. You'll be willing, will you, to wake up early and feed the stock and milk the cows. And you'll be willing to work all day? Why, yes. Why do you ask? Well, George, while I was in my office today, I heard a funny sound. You know what that sound was? It was your mother chopping wood. There you see your mother, waking up early, ironing and cleaning, and she still has to go out in the backyard and chop wood. I suppose she just got tired of asking you. She just gave up and decided it was easier for her to do it herself. And you wear the clothes she keeps nice for you, eat her meals, and you go out and you play baseball like she's some hired girl we keep her around, but we don't like her anymore. Well, son, I knew all I had to do was call your attention to it. Here's the handkerchief, George. Thanks, Paul. George, I decided to raise your spending money 25 cents a week. Not for chopping wood for your mother, because that's a gift you give her, but because you're getting older and, I'm, and I imagine there are lots of things you can buy with it. Thank you, Paul. Let's see. Tomorrow's your payday. You can count on it. Rebecca will probably want some more too. <laughs> I wonder where your mother's been. Horror practice was never this late before. It's only half past eight, Pa. I don't know what she's doing in that old core anyway. She don't have any more voice than an old crow. <laughs> traipsing, around the sh traipsing around the streets this time of the night. Just about time you're tired, don't you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Naturally, I wouldn't want to say it in front of those others, but now we're alone, I just want to say that it's the worst scandal that was ever in this town. What? Simon Stimson. Now Luella. But Julia, to have the organist forget to play the organ? Can you imagine? He's leading the wedding for that adorable Hersey's couple this week. What if he forgets to play the music? Just imagine, the bride <laughs> waiting for their music to begin. I feel sad for him, just too sad. Now we all know about the troubles Mr. Stimson's been going through, and Dr. Gage knows too. And he, if he's going to keep him out there, now all we have to do is just not to notice. Not to notice? But it's getting worse. No, it's not. I've been in the choir practice twice as long as you have. Today wasn't usual for him. I think the poor man keeps forgetting everything these days. Wasn't it just last week he forgot to play the music for a good two minutes? The preacher had to say something to get him going. Good night. Bye. Well, we had a real good time. Late enough. Well, not any later than usual. You stopping at the corner to gossip with a lot of hands. Now, Frank, don't be grouchy. Would you smell the heliotrope in the moonlight? Isn't that wonderful? What did you do the time I was away? Oh, I read this book, as usual. 
What were the girls gossiping about tonight? Oh, there is something to gossip about. Simon Stimson and his poor mind, was it? Yes, how about that, and can he be helped with medicine? I guess I know more about Simon Stimson's affairs more than anyone in this town. <laughs> I know how that will end. There's nothing medicine or we can do but just leave him alone and wish him the best. Come, get in. No, I'm worried about you. Worried about me? Why would you be worried about me? Well, I think it's my duty, and if I get a legacy, I'm going to insist on it. Now, Julie, there's no sense in going over that again. Frank, you're just unreasonable. What if we go to Paris? Just think. We could. Let's see. The Eiffel Tower. You think? We could. Let's take a trip to Versailles. in the United States of America. What's so strange about that? Listen, I'm not finished. United States of America, continent of North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the solar system, the universe, the mind of God. What do you know? And the postman bought it just the same. Well, what do you know? Three years have gone by. Yes, the sun has come up and set over a thousand times. Some babies that weren't even born yet had begun to speak regular sentences. And those who thought they were young and spry can't bound up a flight of steps without their heart fluttering a little. All that can happen in a thousand days. And love has been pushing and contriving other ways too. Some people have fallen in love and even gotten married. Most everyone in the world gets married, and in our town, there are hardly any exceptions. And with that, we'll call it 10 minute intermission. Thank you, we'll see you in act two. Thank 
gone by. It's 1904, July 7th, just after the high school commencement. For some reason, this is about the time that our young folks find themselves fit to get married, right after they've finished their, their exams in solid geometry and Cicero's orations. Now, it's early morning, and it's been raining and pouring. Sorry, Daddy. Now, here's, uh, here's Mrs. Webb and Mrs. Gibbs down for breakfast, just as any ordinary day. I don't have to point out to the women in my crowd that these two women cook three meals a day, one for 20 and the other for 40, and never a summer vacation. They brought up two children apiece, washed and cleaned the house, and never an early breakdown. It's like what one of those Middle Western poets said. You gotta love life to have life, and you have to have life to love life. It's what they call a vicious circle. Now, here's Howie Newsom bringing the milk, and here comes Cece Crowell delivering the paper just as her sister wants. <laughs> morning, Daphne, and morning, Howie. Morning, Cece. Anything in the papers I ought to know? Nothing left, except for losing the best baseball pitcher Gomez Corn to Adam Howie. Reckon he is. Adam. Seems like he would give up a big thing like that just to get married. Do you have? I don't know, Cece. Never had no talent. Morning, Mrs. Gibbs. Morning, Howie. I know I asked for two quarts of milk, but I hope you can spare me another. And the tea cream? Yes. Will it rain again? I don't know, Mrs. Gibbs. But Mrs. Webb, Mrs. Newsom told me to tell you that we are both very happy. So thank you. The day has come, I'm losing one of your chicks. Don't say another word, I feel like crying every minute. The groom is up shaving himself, only there ain't a lot to shave. Whistling and singing like he's <laughs> glad to leave us. Every now and then he says, I do to the mare, but it don't sound convincing to me. <laughs> I've packed his clothes so he'll stay warm. But Rebecca and George won't think of such things. They're just too young. They'll cast your death within a week. I was just remembering my wedding day, Julia. Oh, don't do that again. <laughs> I was the scariest young fellow to stand in New Hampshire. I thought I'd make a mistake for sure. There I saw you come down the aisle, and I thought you were the prettiest guy I'd ever seen. But the only problem was, I'd never seen you before. <laughs> and I wanted to come to the baseball church, and I met a total stranger. And how do you think I felt? Weddings are perfectly awful. Farces, that's what they are. How did you sleep last night, Julia? Well, I did hear a lot of hours to struck off by the grandfather's clock. I get a shock every time I think of George selling out to be a man, a family man, that Greek gangling thing. I tell you, Joy, there's nothing as scary in the world as a son. The relationship of father and son is the darkest, awkwardest, weirdest. Well, let me tell you, mother and daughter is no picnic at all. They'll have their own troubles, I suppose, but that's none of our issues. Everyone has a problem to their has a right to their own issues. It isn't natural for people to become lonesome. People are meant to go meant to go through life two by two. You know, I was one of those things I was scared of, and I was married to Julia. Go along with you. I was afraid we wouldn't have material for conversation for more than a couple of weeks. <laughs> I was afraid that after that we would be eating our meals in silence. Well, you and I have conversed for over 20 years now without a break, and that's a fact. Well, good weather or bad weather, I've always had something to say. Did you hear Rebecca stirring around upstairs? No, only the other year Rebecca is managing to get into everyone else's business. Oh. I, got, I got the impression she's crying. Oh dear, oh dear, Rebecca, I'm coming. Oh. No! Only five more hours to live. <laughs> George, don't go outside without putting on your overshoes. Oh, I told you step away. George, you'll catch your death of a cold within a week. George, do as your mother tells you. <laughs> yes, Pa. As long as you live in my house, you live wisely. Thank you.
Hello, George. You know I can't ask you anything, do you? Why not? Everyone knows that on a wedding day a groom can't see its bride. Oh, that's just a superstition. <laughs> Millions have followed it, George. You don't want to be the first one to uh, face the customer. How's Emily? Well, I still got the feeling she's sleeping. Emily's asleep? No wonder. We've been suing, sewing, and packaging all night. Let me go check on her. Well, how are you, George? Good, Mr. Webb. What sense could there be a superstition like that? Well, on her wedding day, a girl's head apt to be full of bulls. And one thing or another. Don't you think that's probably it, George? I've never thought of it like that. Well, I only sends her love, but she doesn't want you to lay eyes on her, so bye-bye. Um, goodbye. Goodbye, George. <laughs> Emily, come on. Why are you eating? has eaten over 50,000 meals before. How do such things come to be? Well, Emily and George are going to show you the conversation that they had when, well, as the saying goes, they found out that they were meant for each other. But before that happens, I want you to do something for me. I want you to look back and think what it was like to be young, and specifically, to be young and in love. We were just a little bit crazy, almost like you were sleepwalking. Can we remember that, please? Now, George and Emily will be coming home from school. George has just been elected president of the junior class, which means he'll be, junior, he'll be president of the senior class. And Emily has just been elected treasury and secretary. And I don't have to tell you how important that is. Hi, Emily. Can I carry your books home for you? Um. Okay. I'm awful glad you were elected too, Emily. Thanks. <laughs> Emily, why are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you, George. You've been treating me so funny lately. Well, I guess since you asked, I might as well tell the truth. George, I don't like the whole change that's come over you this past year. You've become really full of yourself. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but I can't be sorry I said it. A change? What do you mean? But I know I've been treating you funny, and it's just that... There's been a change in you. All you care about is baseball. No matter what you do, and everyone else sees it too. Perfect. I'm glad 
he spoke to me gently. I'll try my best to make you see that there's been a change. There's been a change for the better. <laughs> there's been a change in me. Soda or something with me. Thank you, Emily. <coughs> <laughs> George and Emily, why Emily? Why have you been crying this afternoon? Oh, um, she almost got run over by um, Mr. Frank's wagon and she just got really, really scared. Well, I tell you, Emily, you gotta look both ways before crossing the street. What will it be? Have a strawberry soda. Thank you, Miss. No, 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 Emily, have a strawberry milkshake with me. Two strawberry milkshakes. Two strawberry milkshakes coming up. <laughs> yes, sir. Enjoy. They're so expensive. No, Emily, don't think of that. We're celebrating because of the election. And do you know what I'm also celebrating of? What? I'm celebrating that I've got a friend that tells me everything that ought to be told. George, please don't think of that. It's not true. You're... No, Emily, you stick to it. And, Emily, can I ask you a question? Sure, George. Will you write letters to me next year when I go to agricultural school? I certainly will, George. I certainly will. It seems like they've gone three years. You certainly do seem to get such with things. Maybe letters from Grover's Corners wouldn't be that interesting anymore. Yeah, I'll never think what happened to our town and what's going on. And maybe it's more important to see the people that you know instead of new people. And Emily, can I ask you a question? Sure, George. Do you think if I change my character, you could be, you I would be? I always have been, and I always will be. So I guess this conversation was important. Yes, it was. Okay, so I'll, wait one minute, I'll take you home. <laughs> um, I need to go get my money real quick, but for now you can have my gold watch. George Gibbs, are you telling me? Uh, here, you can have my gold watch without it. It's all right, George, keep it. I'll trust you for 10 years and not a day over. Thank you, be back in a minute. Now that that's over, we can get on with the wedding. Now, there are a lot of things to be said and a lot of things to be done at a wedding, but as it is Grover's Corners, they are awfully short. Thank you. She's done for 17 years now. <laughs> George, George, what's the matter? Oh, Ma, I don't want to grow old. <laughs> Why does everyone keep pushing me so much? But isn't that what you wanted? No, Ma, just listen. All I ever wanted to be was a fella. Uh, George, I'm ashamed of you. How's Emily? George, you've given me such a turn. Cheer up, Mom. I'm getting married. It's okay. But why is everyone pushing me so? Let's go away. Uh, Emma, Emma, Emily, you're just nervous. <laughs> George, George, come over here. The Papa. Emily, George, I'm trusting with you with my daughter. I will try, Emily. I really will try. All I want is someone to love me. <laughs> I really want to try, Emily. Really. And I'm forever. <laughs> Forever? Okay, okay, yeah. okay, everybody's waiting for, okay, get to your places, everybody's waiting. <laughs> <laughs>
<clears throat> do you, George, take Emily to be your wedded wife? I do. And do you, Emily, George? There's been a change in me. All I care about is forever. No matter what may be, I want you with me. Now, Shorty Hawkins is watching the final Albany train go by. It's someone standing up in the stable, talking and lighting up. Now, the stars are it's starting to clear up, and there are so many stars in the sky. They're doing their old, old crisscross thing. And scholars have begun to believe that there are no living things in the sky, that there's only chalk or possibly fire. But there's one star that's straining straining so hard to be something that every 16 hours, everyone lays down, lays down and gets some rest. Eleven o'clock in Grover's Corners. I suppose you should get some sleep now too. Good night everybody. Huge thanks to Miss Jones for putting all this together for us. Thank you! Yeah. Thank you. 